Hi, welcome to the galley. Today I want to talk to you about making a DIY of that Nestle Quick Chocolate Milk Powder that is going to be shelf stable for you. It's going to be a product that you feel really good about giving to your family. For me, this is all about for my husband Billy who absolutely loves chocolate milk. Isn't that right, baby? I love my chocolate milk. He does love chocolate milk. Now we already made the the chocolate syrup, but the problem with that can be that it does have a expiration date. Even though it's in your refrigerator, it does have an expiration date. This this is going to be shelf stable. So put this in an airtight container. You're going to put this in your pantry, and whenever you need hot chocolate or chocolate milk. You're going to be ready to go. Grandkids come over. You can whip them up some chocolate milk. Feel good about it. Your husband wants some chocolate milk. Sometimes late at night, Billy and I, we just like a little bit of hot chocolate. You get a little bit of that sweetness and warmth. And I also think it's important to talk about the quality of the ingredients that you're putting in here. Because we're trying to get away from chemicals and preservatives and additives so I think it's important to talk about the ingredients and this natives this is the cocoa powder that I use it is regenerative farming it is GMO free it is USDA certified organic it is certified organic farming so this is a cocoa powder that I feel good about using and feeding to myself and my husband so this recipe, super simple. So you can make as much or as little as you want. It is simply equal parts, cocoa powder, sugar, and powdered milk with a little pinch of salt. Now I do think it's uh, helpful to sift your cocoa powder and your milk powder so that that gets really, really incorporated. So we've got our one cup of cocoa powder so I'm going to move on to my milk powder. Now your milk powder, the, the biggest important thing for your milk powder is to look for one that the only ingredient is milk. So on this one that I have here, the one and only ingredient is just milk. There's nothing else. There's just milk. Now that already chocolate milk powder that you buy, it contains you know my favorite word natural flavors which is not natural it only has to have one ingredient that's natural and can have up to a hundred chemicals and solvents so don't let that natural flavoring fool you it also contains soy so if you have you know soy can um, really upset a lot of people's tummies and it can contain wheat and my favorite thing about that that it says it may contain wheat. So does it or, or doesn't it? So if you have a gluten allergy, then you can't use those. So the biggest concern whew, <laughs> that got a little ahead of me is there is an ingredient in there called carrageenan. Now carrageenan is derived from seaweed, but it is highly, highly processed. Now this carrageenan is used because it helps when you stir that into your milk, it helps keep it all together and it helps keep it mixed up, if you will. And so when you kind of make your own, you might have to stir it a couple of times, which quite frankly, I'm okay to do because that carrageenan has been linked to colon cancer, it has been linked to digestive issues, and it has been linked to diabetes. It does cause inflammation so, you know, I think knowing that, I'm okay if I have to re-stir my chocolate milk. I kind of um, give it to Billy in a jar with the lid and he just shakes it up. Now, for my sugar, this is the sugar that I use. This is my favorite sugar. This sugar cane is grown in the USA. It's grown in Florida. Again, we have regenerative farming practices. It is GMO free. It is certified USDA, USDA organic, all natural, beautiful product. Now this product um, is not super, super processed. So it's going, it hangs on to some of its 
molasses. So it's never going to be that white, white, like the sugar that you're used to seeing because it still has that molasses. So if you made simple syrup with it, it's going to look brown and not clear because you didn't process out all of the nutrients in that sugar. And then, oh, sorry, I'm jumping ahead. We were talking about sugar. Now I do, if I can get this off of here, I do put my sugar in the food processor to process it like I'm making um, powdered sugar. And I just do this because I think it helps um, incorporate it and it dissolves faster when I'm making my chocolate milk or hot chocolate. But totally unnecessary, you can just do one cup of sugar. But I just I think this makes a nicer product when you do give it a roll in your food processor and break it up a bit. So there we are, equal parts. And then for my salt, and you know that the real salt is my favorite. This salt is mined in Utah. It has 60 trace minerals in it. And it is an all natural product. You got to be careful about some of those uh, pink Himalayan sea salts that you find. And especially if they come from China, because a lot of times they mine through the salt into the core. So they can have dangerous levels of lead and all kinds of things in them. So for this, I'm just going to do about an eighth of a teaspoon of my real salt. And then we're going to whisk this up. Now, store this in an airtight container, and when you're ready, you have your own homemade chocolate milk powder. And I'll show you how I make mine. Now, I know you're probably thinking, that's a lot of sugar. Well, you can drop that sugar down by, you know, three quarters of a cup. But this batch of one cup, one cup, one cup, that's going to make almost... 30 servings of chocolate milk. So all of that sugar is not going into one serving. If you can't have sugar, if you are diabetic, you can substitute that sugar for stevia in the raw and still have your chocolate milk and hot chocolate. So now it's going to get a little personal. You're going to have to decide how much milk and how much mix that you want. But I find for a 16 ounce cup of milk, two heaping tablespoons of your mix is perfect. Now, if you have one of those aerator things, you can use your aerator here, or you can just use a spoon or a whisk and whisk it. But I find that the balloon whisk on my immersion blender works perfect for this. Just look now, the thing that I like about that milk powder is that it really just makes this chocolate milk taste so much more creamier. And this is a milk mustache that you can feel really good about. Now, for hot chocolate, because it's a little bit smaller, I think one big heaping tablespoon should be perfect. Again, this is yours. Customize it to... To your liking in your mix you could do one and a half cups of cocoa to two cups of cocoa if you want it even richer and more chocolatier again that's the great thing about making things yourself is that you can make them to satisfy your own taste and needs and then of course it wouldn't be hot chocolate without a great big dollop of whipped cream on top. So there you are. Much better for you. And this is also a great DIY gift. Put a, a nice pretty bow on it with instructions of, of how to make their hot chocolate or chocolate milk. And there you go. Chocolate milk, hot chocolate, shelf stable. And you feel good about all of the ingredients in it. And it tastes amazing. And you know what? I think if you have to have a spoon and stir it a couple times, I think it's well worth it. It's better than having all of those chemicals in your hot chocolate or chocolate milk. Thanks for being here, y'all. Leave me a note in the comments. Tell me what you think. And let me know if you make it and like it. I love the hot chocolate version. Bye, y'all. I'll see y'all later. Thanks. Bye.